Hi, thanks for stopping by. In this episode, I'm going to show you a couple of small tweaks that you can do to Reaper. This is a much smaller video. Last week was dense on preparing a session. Be sure to check it out. I'm preparing a songwriting session so you never get lost. You can deliver multi-tracks, you can comp, you can bounce stereo mixes, you can do a lot of things and you will never lose control of that session. But today is going to be a lot shorter. So let's not waste any more time. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and let's get into it. Okay, so there are a couple of things that I have added on my Reaper projects for a while now. Uh, one of them is that sometimes I want to gain stage properly and like that's quite a subject. I already have a video on it, so I will link it in the, in the description. But the whole idea is from the Ria pack. From Leandro, Lia Fak, you can please download the underscore volume gain trim mixer that I asked him to build. And he was super kind and he did it. And this is the one I've been using for a while. Because many times when you're trying to get the levels right, if you don't want to mess, if you don't want to be messing around with the clip gain of different fragments of a media item and just going like this, or you don't feel like going into the envelopes and overriding the volume envelope and doing small small adjustments to the MIDI item. Uh, if you're only trying to get your peaks at a certain level, you have two options in Reaper. You can either normalize the items to a specific peak. Uh, if you're looking for a magic number, in any case, I would just start at minus 9, minus 12, with all of my true picks, and from there, most of your plugins should be behaving properly in many ways. But if you want to have a small plugin that lets you just adjust it, download the LiaFact volume, show embedded UI in the mixer control panel or the track control panel if you're working more on the arrangement side of it, and you can see this small number. And this JS is built so that you can just drag and it's not aggressive and it has a limit and it's not doing huge 10 dB changes whenever I drag my mouse. You can see that I have to really drag it to start making it go into other places. Or you can hold command or control on your computer and you can micro adjust it by decimals and it will move a lot slower. So you can just bring the level of it to wherever you need if you're using something like this. It's probably a lot faster to drag something like this instead of messing around with all of the clips. And again, maybe you can just change the automation mode of your track using this part of your track, right clicking this part of your track and changing to touch. And whenever you're and whenever you're playing your loop, you can just start writing some automation with this. And that's an easy way. Still, if you want to write something, I would rather go into the trim envelope. I would rather go into the trim. Uh, but this is really useful for gain staging. You can use it since it's zero processing usage, you can just double it and use it to lower stuff between different stages of your session. Next, uh, I always have number two. I always have my main floating toolbar here that I have also made a video and I will link it in the description. Uh, but if you right click in this area, you can switch the whole toolbar. You can position the toolbar in other places so you have it like that. But one that I don't see too many people using is open toolbar because this won't replace the main toolbar that you have. So maybe I'm recording and I'm just trying to set up the track inputs of many tracks. So I have these many tracks. I can arm all of them. And in this recording toolbar, I already have the actions to set the inputs to one through eight and also the stereo inputs right here. So I have to have them armed so I can actually see how they are changing the input by just clicking the action. 
and I can do the stereo inputs or the mono inputs on either one of those. Having a floating toolbar is super useful. So for example, my toolbar five is my recording toolbar, right? And instead of switching it up here, like I would normally do, I can just open and float with any custom shortcut on my keyboard and I have it right there. I can close it and I can reach that floating toolbar whenever I need it at my mouse position. And that's super fast. If you have one of these mouses that have ton of extra buttons here, you might want to use that. Or if your keyboard has a couple of macros, like, or if you have something like the Stream Deck and you want to use that with all of the shortcuts so you don't have to be wasting time in your hands with it. The point being that you can have any toolbar at any given time and that's super fast. And last, I really like the idea of being able to navigate huge sessions really fast. So for example, with the recording template that I shared last week, if I'm working with this amount of tracks, that those are plenty, and maybe when I'm working on track one, I only want to see track one. So I will hide the rest of them so I don't get distracted. And I'm going to use, again, one of my toolbars. In this case, it's going to be, it's going to be using from view, screen sets, layouts, the track views menu, or the track view window tab. And here I will link the save key and the load key into my toolbar, right? So here on my toolbar, I will add certain actions that are save track view one, save track two, three, three blah, 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 how many you want. And then I will just look for load track view one through five, maybe if that's enough. I will build this custom toolbar. I will close it. Now it's down here. So the great thing of this one is that I can use this really, really small toolbar for navigating a huge project and I can just have it floating around or opening it with a shortcut or having it in my main toolbar as an easy access. So I will save track one, track two. I'm going to check all of them, cursor position, control position, because what I will probably want to do is to go into the disposition of this song, right? Into that region, into that specific region, go into my horizontal zoom so I only see that song, my visibility of my track control panel and the visibility of my mixer control panel. I will do the same for track three and for track four. And maybe I'll use the fifth one for a whole project overview. <laughs> and now, even if I don't have this open, I can only use this again, really, really small toolbar without having to go into the track manager every single time and go into track one, track two, track three, track four, or my full project. Using your track layouts on a specific toolbar, on a specific floating toolbar, is going to save you so much time. And if you add on top of this the Leafac vo volume that it can open by default showing the embedded UI in the TCP, it's probably going to be a great add on all of your projects. Because now if this song needs something for writing the level, you have the fader and you have a very independent control using the Leah Pack volume. If you like this kind of videos, there's a link below for buy me a coffee if you want to support my work. I really appreciate it. I'm going to keep on making tons of videos like this, also more music oriented, some technology oriented. And if you like this kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and do all of those things that people on YouTube say. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.